and hi everyone. First of all, uh, welcome and thank you for joining MOOC for Soil Engineering Laboratory course. My name is Nadia Zalika Saifuliza. I am one of the instructors for this course. Today, I'm going to talk about um, the importance of this course in civil engineering program. Also, I would like to touch a little bit on some of the basic needs in producing a good report prior completing um, each laboratory testing later on. So everything you need to know about the course. So this course um, is a fully practical course um, that students need to enroll after passing the soil mechanics course taken in the previous semester. So yes, this, um, this MOOC for ECG 263 is a prerequisite. Uh, it requires a prerequisite, which is um, you need to pass ECG 243 first. And then um, the core status. So ECG 263 is a core subject and somehow it will contribute um, about one credit hour for the semester. Okay, so coming to the next slide. Um, this course will somehow allow students to experience and carry out standard soil laboratory tests that comprises of four main topics. So we will have a look at one by one. Um, the first topic um, is physical properties and classification of soil. The second topic uh, will be compressibility of soil and then followed by the third one coefficient of permeability of soil and the last topic is shear strength of soil. So each topic will focus on a different types of experiment or test according to its purpose. Okay, so I'm going to um, briefly explain um, what are the experiment or lab tests under each topic. So under the uh, first topic, so the experiment um, will be sorry. So the experiment will be um, moisture content and particle density, and then we will have Atterberg limit test that includes a determination of plastic limit and also liquid limit of soil. So for the determination of liquid limit of soil, we are going to uh, do two types of testing, which is um, Casa Grande test and also the cone penetration test. And then we have the classification of soil itself, which is uh, particle size distribution dry sieving for coarse grain soil and then we will have hydrometer test um, for the fine grain soil okay so it is essential uh, why why we need to do this uh, all of this testing um, under the, the first topic uh, so it is essential to group soils uh, according to their order of performance under given set of physical conditions. So under the um, second topic, there will be um, three types of um, testing, uh, which is standard uh, proctor test, and then we will have um, the sand replacement test, and also the last one should be odometer test. Okay, so the prime objective of these testings under the topic of compressibility uh, of soil is basically um, we want to determine the crucial parameters that is required in the design considerations in terms of compressibility and also the consolidation of soil. Okay, so the next one um, coming to the um, third topic, um, there are going to be um, two testing or experiment uh, that we are going to do in order for us to find out 
the permeability coefficient of soil according to its grain size, which is um, the first one will be constant head test for coarse grain soil. And the second one will be falling head test um, for the fine grain soil. Okay, so as you all know, permeability is um, one of the most important engineering properties of the soil that is um, a solution for a number of engineering problems encountered uh, in construction. Okay, so some of the problems um, related to permeability is settlement of foundation and buildings and then we have uh, seepage. Uh, below the earth surface, uh, the surface structures, okay, and then seepage uh, through the earth structures and uh, many more, right? So the last um, test is under the final topic, which is the shear strength of soil. Um, so there are three to four type of testing or experiments depending on the conditions of the soil. So, um, shear strength of soil, uh, as everyone know, uh, is its maximum resistance to shearing stresses. So, students, by doing the uh, all of this testing, which is the shear box test, unconsolidated undrained triaxial test, consolidated uh, undrained and consolidated triaxial test, um, students can find out the cohesion and also the angle of internal friction of soil which are useful in many engineering design um, such as um, foundations, uh, retaining wall and etc. <coughs> so the next one, um, I would just like to touch a bit on some tips on how to prepare a good report. Since this is a full practic uh, practical course, it is important that um, students understand um, that lab report is a vital part um, of the scientific process that we are doing in the lab. So these are the contents um, that shall be included in the uh, lab testing report. Okay, so there will be um, front page, introduction, basic concepts, procedures and methods, result and data analysis, and also discussion and conclusion. Okay, so for the front page, uh, front page shall include your basic information, Okay, such as students' names and your ID number. Um, and then the group, uh, the class or the group that you are attended to. And then uh, name of the test and date of the testing that you conducted. Okay, and then of course the name of lecturer and date of submission. And then coming um, to the second one um, will be the introduction. Okay, so introduction uh, is an introductory paragraph written in the beginning of each report as a glimpse of the experiment that the students is going to report about. Okay, so and then next one will be the uh, basic concept. A uh, basic concept includes a brief theory about the test in addition um, to clear statement of the exact meaning of the conducted um, test. Okay, so students um, may include any theoretical or formula to explain about the test. Okay, and then next one. Um, is procedures or um, methods, methodology. So it is best to write the procedures or your method in a point form and also describe the actual procedures uh, 
uh, conducted in the lab. Okay, so meaning that nothing more or nothing less. So whatever that you are, uh, do in the lab for that particular experiment, you put it in the methodology or procedures. Okay, so then uh, one of the most um, important uh, section is result and data analysis. Okay, so result of the testing um, usually should be computed, okay, calculated, summarized and also need to be compared in um, tabular or graphical format. So, in your result or data analysis, if there is any equations, equations or formulas involved, it should be indicated uh, in this section. Okay, and then all supporting calculations should be shown uh, in detail steps. Alright, so last but not least um, is the discussion and conclusion. So for discussion, students should discuss and also focus on the silent facts shown by your tables and diagrams. So all results should be compared lah, uh, in discussion to the standard values at this section. Okay. So finally is the conclusion. Um, so in conclusion, um, in this conclusion um, area or section, uh, students should put a summary of the report and answer whether they have achieved the objective of the experiment or not. So in addition, uh, students may also comment on their findings uh, and any circumstances or error which their tests um, were conducted. Alright, so I hope everyone is clear on what are the items or the things or the section that we need to put, uh, the contents that we need to put um, into our uh, lab report. So in the previous semester, okay, so why why soil engineering? Why taking this course? Uh, so in the previous semester, students has learned uh, mainly about the principles of soil mechanics and its relation to geotechnical application. So soil mechanics, um, it deals with the study of physical properties of soil and the behavior of soil mass that is subjected to various types of force. So during the time, during that time, when you um, learn about soil mechanics in the previous semester, um, students were taught on how to do, on how to conduct um, the soil testing in theory, theoretically, but never get the chance to do it in the laboratory. Okay, so uh, it only only contains an introduction into the major principle and methods of soil mechanics, um, such as analysis of stress, deformations, and um, stability. Um, so therefore, this course is designed to somehow um, connect uh, whatever knowledge gain from your soil mechanics to the real situation. So for this test, um, it will 100% uh, focus on a practical and application where the fundamental learn from the soil mechanics will be applied. Here, um, the most important methods of determining soil parameters in the laboratory and also in situ will be taught. Okay, so that is why this soil engineering laboratory course is very, very important. So till then, I hope you enjoyed the course and may it be beneficial in your study. So thank you and have a nice day.